Hello, 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 chaps. It is, in fact, turn, or rather, yes, turn 42. And we've already played it, so I'm just going to give you an overview of what's going on. Our blood income was very high. I think it was 148, if I recall correctly. But we haven't quite got all the patrollers we need, as you can see here. So we're summoning another Mound King. Uh, we also have nearly completed this Palisades. Uh, let's see what else is going on. So we've got some Ractopatters moving around, desperately looking for a place to blood hunt. Uh, we're also still establishing our new blood hunting location here. We failed to negotiate a trade so far with um, with uh, Mekane for Lightless Lanterns. We want to buy them off him, if we can. We saw a battle over here. Actually, we saw three battles. So here is a Basalt King raiding. And I don't think their equipment's particularly amazing. It's, it's just this, really. Not terrible, but definitely not amazing either. And I don't understand why Atlantis sent his thugs into these two provinces. It seems to me that they're now doomed to die. Uh, because they can't really escape anymore. I, I don't know what his plan is, but of course I can't really comment when I don't have any vision on this on this place. Uh, the other battle we saw was this, and we can no longer plan to use Hellbind Heart to kill these thugs. Because they have the these things on. So yes, we'll just fast forward to show you the buffs. Like, this is not an easy person to kill. And he does have three attacks as well. On the plus side, they're not really that high in attack score. Um, they're not that high in HP. That's basically the unit's only... Oh, and they're not too high on morale either. And they're not too high on damage. Fairly high damage, but not amazing. So if you take a look at um, this Raptor Patter that I have half geared just for show, like we can easily hit the Centaur's 25 defense skill. And we can probably resist a Vine Shield as well. And we can do a lot of attack. And this isn't even properly geared anyway. You know, we might give him our Heart of Quickness or something. <clears throat> So let's see, what else is there to cover? So we're not at war with Niflheim yet, but you can tell that he's preparing. Because he's got people all the way over in this province. Uh, clearly he's putting them there, not necessarily to be able to win against me, but basically to deter me from attacking him immediately, which is fair enough. Uh, Pan is really crushing Abyssia, and we don't... Well, our scouting is awful, why did I send the scout over here? I meant to modify my turn, but yes, our scouting is terrible. However, you can you can see quite clearly that Yomi is kaput at this point. And we're going to send this guy directly to Yomi. Hopefully we get there in time to watch the big battle go on. We, we've cancelled our NAP with Yomi as well, so that we can hopefully yonk this province off him, and maybe this one as well, if it's still up for grabs. So let's see what else there is. This throne still hasn't been taken. Maybe I should put someone on there, just... Well, I need to scout what Vanheim's up to. I need to know if Vanheim's dead and assimilated by Pangea or not. So I need to make another... I should actually alter my turn. I'm actually going to alter my turn uh, to put in another scout. Scouting has been terrible this game, as I'm sure you noticed. Uh, we put our daggers on these two Ractopatters, and we have them summoning Rakshasa Warriors. Because it's a faster summon than Azrapas. It's five instead of three. And they're individually a bit stronger as well. We've got some more dribbles of... Uh, we've got another dribble of some nine uh, Palankashas coming through. I don't know why this guy... Why have I given him Blood Slaves? Um... This guy, well, he can obviously go here. Yes, and we had this big ball of 
Ractopatters that we couldn't blood search with, and we couldn't, and we put our research imps on other Ractopatters before we looked at this province. So now we have a big ball of Ractopatters that aren't really very useful. Uh, we're making another Skull Mentor and another Lightless Lantern. Next turn we'll summon a Fire Spirit and use, and then we'll have two Fire Lantern, um, Lightless Lantern Forgers. Um, oh yes, and we discovered an astral site somewhere. I think it was. I don't know where it was. So, so here, over a maze. Oh, it's actually plus two astral. That's nice. And over here, we got a quicksand. And we got a little bit of gem income from this province that we conquered. No battle. There, were, there was no PD there. Oh, and we're starving a bit. But I've rearranged things and... You know, the morale on, on these guys from the leadership should counteract the starvation pretty nicely. Right, here's a starving guy with 15 morale left over. And um, this is a 3k pop province. So hopefully... Oh, it's Wasteland. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we are going to have some severe starvation issues. Oh, and the last thing that we saw was this. And basically it was a very strange skeleton spam versus skeleton spam battle. Except that these guys are only uh, death 2. Whereas these are death 3. Um, I think they both selected their randoms for this job. Because I could swear that all the ones I checked were, were death 3 Buddhas or death 2 Geysers. Um, and the chaff that he had with them didn't really help either. So yeah, um, we should be able to handle those Buddhas with just some blessed sacreds because the skeletons don't do anything to them. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, in sum, I would say that our future holds Theridos and Atlantis balanced against each other, hopefully. Uh, it also holds us crushing Mechanae unless we get fucked over by... I have no idea what Mechanae has in store for us, so I don't know. Um, Niflheim is also not a threat to us, but again, might inconvenience us or surprise us. Especially with some geared thugs, because they have those Niflheim jarls, and they have some rings of regen and very strong stuff like that to put on them. I saw a very impressive Niflheim jarl thug the other day from them. Um, and then we have Pan, and we have um, Hinom. And uh, we might be doomed. We might be completely doomed. And if we get into a war with Hinnom, we're definitely going to be pulling over these Earth Majors to cast buffs on our troops. And if we get into a war with Pan, um, we're definitely going to be... Oh shit, I can't use these guys safely without giving them fire resistance items because of my fire, fire aura bless. Oh, how annoying. Yeah, I, I absolutely have to give them... Or I can cast Flame Resistance, actually. Yes, it's okay, I can cast... Um... Oh dear. I can cast Cold Resistance. I don't want to cast Cold Resistance. I want to cast Fire Resistance. Okay, so here we are. But it, it has a pretty small area of effect. <sighs> so we're going to have to... We're going to have to bring in the Earth Mages to buff our Sacreds. And then we're going to have to bring in our Flame Spirit, that's the only one that we summoned with our Pretender God, to buff our Gnome... To, to buff our Earth Mages so that our Bless doesn't burn them to death. This is such a bad build. Please, just don't do this. Just go Earth 5 instead of Fire 5 and take Earth and, uh, Fire and Shock Resistance Bless. And don't go Stygian Flesh either. What was I thinking? I knew, I should have known that I would regret it. I actually, I just, I, I'm such a sucker for Fire Aura and Cold Aura. I want them to be good so badly, because they're so cool. But they're just terrible. They're just absolutely awful. Maybe on a nation that doesn't have sacred mages, but does have sacred troops. So that it's less, less of a pain in the ass to use non-sacred mages, but... Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that.
Let's just adjust our scouting one last time. Uh, this guy can go over here. Is that Abyssia? No. And this guy can go here. That That's Abyssia. Um, ooh, troglodytes. I didn't know I could recruit troglo troglos here. I mean, we, we're not going to be able to afford them, but that's very amusing. Maybe I should, maybe I should have troglodyte bodyguards. No, I definitely shouldn't have troglodyte bodyguards. What am I saying? Um, well, that's about it for this turn. See you next time. Hello, 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 chaps. Um, yes, yes, well, this is turn 40-something. Turn 43, we've already played it. And it looks like Yomi has managed to unraid some provinces, which is nice. What else has happened? Pan. Uh, we, we didn't discover a single site this time around. Additionally, our blood slave income was garbage. It was something like... 60, uh, 70, oh, it was 80, that's better than I realised. Um, but yes, that's garbage. So, and that's because of the unrest issues we've we've been having. But we've we've summoned another Mound King, so now we have double the undead patrillers here. And, you know, we're doing things like that. Um, so it should be, we are cranking up the patrolling. Are we, some, are we casting Call of the Winds? We're not casting Call of the Winds, but we did cast it last term, he, turn here. And we've also given in and decided to blood hunt this province over here, even though it's a very valuable income. Um, so these Basil Kings aren't hugely geared, so they're not particularly interesting. Theridos is just 980? Holy shit. Um, yes, Theridos, blimey. I think Atlantis might not be very long for this world. Um, so Mashak and Wolves caught our scout over here. So we didn't scout these battles. The the Buddhas may have gone into stealth. So they might, might still be around. These Nephaljals are probably very well geared. So I'm glad that I have an NEP1 with him. Although we did bring in these Azrapas. Which ought to intimidate him. Um... Let's see what else is going on. I cancelled our NAP with Abyssia because I thought I'd already done it. So yes. Um... Um... Because we might as because they're so weak that there's no reason to have an NAP with them. Mashaka is still looking extremely weak. So, but we're starving very badly here now. I think everyone is starving now in this army. So, yes, the morale is not so great. What is it at? Why can't I select things? Anyway, and there's another lab here. Why are there unforted labs everywhere? So we were able to stock up on gems conveniently. Let's see what else is going on. We're, we're going into this province with some sacreds. Um, I don't know if there's anything much else to report. Oh yes, we were thinking a bit more about these earth mages. I think I'm just going to make armor of knights. I might also make the stone skin boots, because if you look at these thugs that uh, Pan has, about half of these guys are geared, half of these hierophants. Um, so basically, if you look at this random, half of them get earth, and that makes them a good thug. So he basically pays 240 gold for a thug, whereas I pay 390 from my cap. So that's pretty dangerous for me, you know. I really need to make sure my gear is very good on these Rakshasas when I'm sending them up against these Panthugs. And it will happen. And it's the same against Hinnom. Um, I don't know if Thugs are really the way to go against Hinnom. I think in Hinnom's case, I might just need a huge mass of Blood Sacreds. Um, but yes, we need to be ready. We need to be very ready for things. Let's see what else is going on. Um, if my blood income continues to be weak, I might have to finally give up and put, uh, blood search in my capital provinces. Actually, no, that's a terrible idea. I won't do that. 
goodness my upkeep is going up. It was on 700 not not very long ago and this is just from making mages. I'm not even making troops. 100? Ooh, that's um, how much is that? That's 11 gold per month and we're training two of them per month. So we're losing 22 gold. We're adding 22 to this every month just from these four. Oh no, we're not making one here because we haven't forted this. We don't have the money. Maybe I should go back to making wreck chassis so I can fort this. Oh, but this is air astral. I already ha I'm training astral mages in three sites, so maybe I actually don't need to worry about this. Let's just take the three gems and shut up. Let's see. Let's see what else is there to say. Um, not much. There's not much else to say. Uh, at least we're getting some blood slaves sent in from the outlying provinces. Oh, and our research is looking pretty good. Or is it? Oh, I thought it was above 700. Oh, we ended up casting Rakshasa warriors instead of researching all of, all of these guys. Um, hopefully, Mekane sends me the four lightless lanterns which I mowed. It is a, a bannable offence not to do, not to want to trade, so we will whine at him. He did say there would be a one-turn delay, so he's not late yet, but I'm very paranoid about that. So, looks like Meshak, looks like we can completely eat Meshaka. And there's no, there is a candle route up here. So we now have a border, oh and they're still independent. But we're not far away from Mekane now. I suppose Mekane must be at, at war with people, otherwise he would have taken these. Um, yes, that's about all I have to report for today. We are certainly struggling with the whole blood hunting patrolling thing. But um, should we should be able to sort things out eventually. Why is this guy... I don't really need to move him anywhere, do I? Because I'm building a lab in this province anyway. So I might as well leave him there. Um, oh yes, and the lab will mean that we then have access to... Uh, we then have access to water magic. Since Atlantis isn't too interested in buying our water gems, apparently. Uh, and then we can forge frost brands. That's nice. That's convenient. That is about it for today. We did make a chainmail of displacement. Maybe that's actually a waste. You know, what? I think we we need we need the slaves. We need blood slaves desperately. That's an economic investment, whereas a chainmail of displacement is an immediate investment that doesn't really scale very much. Although we do need armor for people, but I think I'm going to be forging armor of knights, not chainmails. Terrible idea to make chainmails, especially when your mages are air mages anyway. So it's terribly redundant. Not mages, when your combatants, when your thugs can already cast that sort of spell on themselves. So um, we are still casting Gnome Law, but it's it's going to be Armour of Knights out of these guys. The moment we, sent, we see a war coming, we're going to ship them out. We're going to ship a bunch of Armour of Knights. Or if it's Pan, we're going to ship ourselves. Anyway, that's turn 43. Hello chaps, hello chaps. It's turn 44. We've already played it. This is the overview. And we were very pleasantly surprised to see the battle that occurred in Mashaka. We're now going to storm the fort the, uh, tomorrow and the, we expect no resistance. Because Mashaka had some chaff and 28 turns of cap-only mage recruitment. Oh, he also had some geared banes. I didn't notice this. So this is a very good way to find out how much damage my sacreds do to an enemy with 28 protection. Um, along with a bit of encumbrance. Why does he have these? This is You shouldn't put reinvigoration boots on undead. They don't get fatigued. Terrible. Anyway. Um, the game is bloody loud. Jesus Christ. Anyway, anyway, there we are. The game is now a tutorial. Let's watch this. Actually, let's pause it. So, this guy has 28 protection, right? And as you can see, he's been chonked because you know, it's 35 damage. So it's a bit like going up against a barbarian with 15 protection. And, uh, you know, because it's 7 less protection. So a barbarian with 22 damage and you have 15 protection, he's just going to chonk you. Um, the Azrapas aren't far behind actually. I mean, he has as much armor as they have damage. 
That's like going up against barbarians with 22 armor, I suppose. Which, I mean, it's a bit like taking your earth snake into a bunch of, um... Oh, goodness, Кто там? No. Я вас слушаю. Why? I don't... I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. I, my browser's talking to me in Russian again. Um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Oh, um, by the way, I didn't... Yes. Um... So maybe it's not the Azrapas that do the damage. Let's watch this very carefully and slowly. All oh, right, he just dies to racked to patters. Yeah, so that was a bit of a wash. Why is he using great short swords of sharpness against me anyway? Those are for single targets, not for killing a whole group of people. So yes, the game's basically over for Mashaka. He just didn't have what it takes to kill this. Uh, he'd stagnated in his little patch of land over here and in his little war with um, Niflheim, and so he wasn't able to bring anything serious to bear against me. And in fact, he posted a rather butthurt comment on Discord, uh, which is understandable. He says, Wait, what? Are you telling me people did not instantly attack the Lanka with a super greed bless? Which I disagree. I don't think it's super greed. We did have neutral production and we did have growth three. Um, all right, I have nothing to stop from ju from just eating me. Good luck dealing with the Lanka for everyone else. Uh, so hopefully, you know, he's he and probably Niflheim is probably also desperately looking for someone else to attack me and desperately messaging them to attack me. Um, so the game might be over for these two nations. I'm not sure about Niflheim. But it's probably over for me as well. Because now we have to face up against both Hanom and Pan simultaneously. Maybe not simultaneously, but that's certainly a possibility as to what could happen. Um, let's see what else is there to say. Uh, this turn, so we got we got income sites. We got, I think it was this maze that we got and this enchanted gate. So plus three astral. So we will probably cast a Akashic record on their capitals. Uh, presently, just to find out how far, you know, how their research is going compared to mine. Because I really have no idea, and it would be nice to know. I would assume that Pan's research is wor worse than mine, because they've always been fighting. But I suspect that Hinom's research is better than mine. In fact, I probably know that. Uh, we got to see a, um, a battle in... Yes, Hinom raiding another Yomi province. Yomi is very much not long for this world. Oh my goodness. I forgot about these great bows. I'm glad that I have Stygian Flesh now. Stygian Flesh regen blood bond should be able to shrug off this damage, even though it is quite considerable. Um, so here we have a an Ami casting Iron Warriors on this guy, and as you will see in a moment, that brings it up to... Oh, and the Bless doesn't. He didn't go for Fire and Shock Resistance. He went for Strength. That's actually very good news for us, because it means we can just... We can completely destroy this guy with simply summoning fire elementals. Same if he's casting Iron Warriors all the time. So this is very good news for us. Um, he does have the Holy Scourge. He will have made these a lot to deal with um, Yomi, and now they're also good against me. So that's very unfortunate. But I think, you know, we saw Bane Lords with 28 protection get chomped not very long ago. Uh, 20, 30 protection is not much higher. In addition, if you look at the stats on our sacreds, a Palankasha does 30 damage in Chaos 3, but a this guy does 36 damage. So, actually, what does Blunt do? I can't remember how Blunt modifies things. I think it's just for head hits, isn't it? that it's stronger. So, you know, these guys will be... And then, then we can cast Bloodlust as well, which is plus four, so it's 40, and then maybe we'll cast Strength of Giants, depending on... Uh, on Jesus, that's a little bit annoying. Um, so, actually, we don't have anything to, hear, to fear from Hinnom's uh, thugs, because we can just kill them with our troops. So, uh, I've been panicking all this time about the Centaur thugs and the Hinnom thugs, but... The more any of my more experienced viewers, if there are any, will have been laughing at me because they'll well just kill them with your Azrapas and your Palankashas and your Rakshasa warriors, and so that's what I'm going to do. So suddenly, 
Now that I've looked at those two Bane Lords get killed, I didn't notice them the first time I was playing this turn. You know, suddenly things are looking about a lot better for me. I feel very much more confident about this game. And it looks like Mashaka is a full, uh, a full population province. How is his Dominion score only three? Just from one turn of my profit being there? That's so strange. Anyway, looks like he had an ordinary domain strength, um, so I won't criticise him there. Uh, what else is there to say? So yeah, we only got two sites this turn from our site searching, but we've set up a lot more site searching, so we should be able to find some things. Uh, our research is looking really good, and we are getting Alteration 7. Let's see what Alteration 7 gets us. So we're going to get Darkness, very important spell. We're going to get an absolutely necessary spell, actually. Although we need a Death 4 Mage to cast it. And the only way we can possibly have a Death 4 Mage... I might have to twice spawn my, my Pretender God and take her to battles just to cast darkness. Um, well, I'll certainly do that if it's in this vicinity. Um, goodness, though. That's not very good, though. I shouldn't have to do that. How am I going to deal with this? This isn't good at all. I don't have anyone who can bloody well cast darkness. What I really need is a Rakshasi with a double death random, but that's a 1 in 16 chance. I need a Death 3 Raksh... whatever they're called. What are they called? Raksharani. Oh! Well, here she is. She's our darkness... You know, suddenly I realise that this is the most one of the most important mages in my whole empire. And, um... Yeah, she's just sitting around casting Summoner's Rapers. Blimey! What was I thinking? You know, I bet a bloody turfer over here. Bloody pronto. And, um... Because Hinom is the real threat. I think Hinom is much stronger than Pan. Almost certainly. And he's also tangled up in Vanheim for a bit. Um, goodness. What was I thinking? Not. Let's give her some defensive gear as well, if we can. I don't know. Well, let's at least give her a nature... You know, she can cast Summon Imps now if she gets assassinated. But goodness, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Terrible, terrible stuff. Uh, this province is nearly exhausted, so we'll have to move them around. Um, but we're not going to cast any more Call of the Winds, and we're certainly not going to make any Alquils, not that we have for a while, because we need to use... We might have to splurge a whole lot of... Um, Air Elementals on Hinnom. Actually, maybe maybe Pan is the one we have to worry about. Because we can spend a crap ton of Air Gems fighting Hinnom, and that'll probably be fine. But against Pan, I'm not so certain. Because they have a Lightning Resistance Bless. Um, and they have White Centaurs, and they have their Centaur Thugs. I wish I just had... Wouldn't it be nice to just have Recruitable Death 4 everywhere? Oh, and I, I was still talking about my research. So, Alteration 7. It gets us Darkness. It gets us Skeletal Legion. That's probably not relevant. It gets us Mass Protection. Also probably mostly not relevant because we do have... I'll cast it, but we already have a Stygian Skin Bless anyway. It gets us Creeping Doom, which is mostly irrelevant. It gets us Marble Warriors. This is exceptionally important. No one's using cold damage. This is fantastic. And we are going to be bringing in our, our throne Earth 2 mages just to cast that spell. Although they'll be, they'll be casting Legions of Steel and Strength of Giants as well, of course. Um, so yes, three very important spells. Marble Warriors and Darkness. Actually, that's two, isn't it? Then Enchantment Level 7 gets us... Oh, and we can cast Anti-Magic as well. We better do that as well when, with our throne mages in these battles to come. Does it affect the whole, the whole battlefield for one astral pearl? Very strange. Um, Enchantment six does not have anything that matters. Maybe relief if people are casting heat from hell or rigor mortis or whatever, but they won't be. Um, 
Mass Flight. Enchantment 7 gives us Mass Flight. That is absolutely devastating, and I think neither of my future enemies are have air magic. They probably have some, but I don't think they have much. So we uh yeah, we're gonna have a lot of mass flight. Um I mean you cast mass flight. Suddenly only your unconscious people are in it unable to instantly flee if the battle lose starts losing. Suddenly you're enveloping the enemy formations. With these bloodlusted Lanka sacreds, you know, this is very good. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, we really need it. Easy MR negates, that's nice. 5% chance of being blinded, that's not important. Um, at least they can destroy our skeleton hordes, but they don't matter anyway. Yeah, so basically, we're researching mass flight from here, we're researching marble warriors um, and stuff. On alteration then you have blood seven in fact let's just bite the bullet and call it blood eight so blood seven gets us leech which is a maybe that's not important it depends if we need it to kill uh, high value targets I don't know if it will matter or not uh, salmon and shards I might use those I don't know it depends we'll give it a try just to mess with them um, and then the big boys mandejas who doesn't like having super competence? They're always fun. And Danavas are superb as well, of course. They have multiple attacks, they're titans, um, they're just tremendous people. Although they probably have minus 10 fire resistance, I'm not sure. They probably only have minus 5. But we're going to be casting... We're going to be casting... Where is it? Flame Ward. <laughs> Several units. At least we can do that. Oh, and Mandejas we can gear. I don't know, though. Where's the... Firefend? <laughs> we kind of want Enchantment 8 just for this spell now. Um, especially against Hinnom. So yes, Niflheim has... Because Niflheim... Niflheim can't really fight in my scales because I have Heat 3. But I also might struggle to fight in his scales because he has Order 2. So my troops will be vastly weaker. They'll lose 5 strength, 5 attack and defense skill, um, maybe 5 something else as well. I can't remember what Chaos Power affects. Um, so I will try to Dom push him a bit and maybe nab this fortress. Uh, and of course his only play is to attack me. There's literally nothing else he can do. Uh, Theridos and Atlantis are still balanced against each other. Um, and... You know, Theridos is trying to chase down these Basil Kings, but it's not really working. Uh, they're really messing with him quite a lot. And they're not even very heavily geared either. The thing I worry about for Theridos is if you turn it with a thousand chaff, doesn't that actually prevent you from killing the Basil Kings? Because they'll get in the way of any anything that's actually capable of killing them. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, and I think that's about everyone. The only wild card is Mekane. Is Mekane weak or is Mekane strong? I suspect the answer is that Mekane is that Mekane is weak. Um, and we're actually going to find out pretty soon because we're going to be scouting their core provinces. Why did I only make one scout here last turn? That's a bit annoying. Why is this guy waiting? There's nothing more for him to do here. Um, oh, except he's waiting to, till we have the money to build a, a fortress there, of course. So yes, that's, that's, that's really it for turn 44 now. See your traps at turn 45. Hello traps, hello, hello, hello. It is, um, it's turn 45. And as you can see, we were terribly complacent about Hinnom. They demolished um, our raven and our hawks here, and three blood hunters, and goodness knows how many blood slaves. Each of these groups consists of some long dead, along with a geared Melkart that's well capable of destroying any of my Rakshasa commanders in one hit. Um, which has caused me to basically give up on trying to use them as thugs. However, a thought has just occurred to me, which is that I can still thug. I just need to um, 
cast a mir mist form, I think. Or mirror image. I think that'll work if I cast mirror image. Um, but I'm not going to do that today. And as you can see, you know, our research is much better now. But it's just not there yet, and the war's already started. So. Uh, over here, I don't think Niflheim can attack us, but we're moving this force away. So maybe Niflheim will attack us because we do that. And we're leaving these as Rapas here. So that should hopefully continue to intimidate Niflheim. I think this guy will be coming over here. These blood slaves are retreating. This province is nearly done anyway, um, because these guys might raid them. So let's see. I think one of Atlantis's thugs died, because I only see one left in these provinces. Mashaka. Oh yes, we stormed Mashaka. And I haven't even bothered watching the replay, because as you can see, it was basically just skeleton spam. Um, and you can't skeleton spam against regen blood bond sacreds. It just doesn't work. We also somehow picked up yet another affliction on this one, which is very annoying. Um, and we're splitting up now to take the remaining provinces. And, and once we're done here, you know, the, these forces may be too far away, but at least we can put them here and that'll intimidate Ambicia away from attacking us. Hopefully. Now, what else was I going to say? Yes, we're leaving 35 palancashes here because we're going to train this guy and have him park them over here. Uh, with these two guys, just to intimidate Niflheim. Or maybe even to just attack Niflheim. Um, we've, you know, we're not ready for this war. We were very much assuming and hoping that we would have much more time before it arrived. And we were very wrong and very foolish to assume that. And now we're screwed, because we cannot let this fort with all of our researchers. We can take the research gear off them, uh, if they actually break the fort. But we cannot... You know, it, it, it'll be a terrible blow to our research. It'll be very annoying. It'll allow them to raid here, and it'll just be extremely unfortunate if we just start losing provinces. Uh, this one I'm not going to defend because I'm more concerned about defending here. Uh, what else is there to say? These mages, I don't know what I can really... Blime it. I didn't even know that they had adept researcher. So these mages, leaving them mindlessly researching, is actually perfectly fine. I didn't realise that. Um, I guess this is our next target for a bunch of blood hunting. And we might actually load this guy up with some more air gems just to be on the safe side. Actually, you know what? Maybe I won't. I'm not going to summon. Currently, I, I have it so that I'm summoning as uh summoning Rakshasa warriors with these guys. And that's kind of a feeble play when your cap circle is under attack. So you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm going to have a splurge. I'm going to splurge my gems on a whole bunch of air elementals. I think that is indeed what I'm going to do. And these guys aren't really... You know, let's have a look. So I've never actually done this before. I don't play air nations usually. Um, Let's see, where's Storm? We don't have Storm. We have to have Storm, don't we? Wait, what research is Storm? Oh, bugger. No, we don't. It's kind of difficult to cast it anyway, actually. We don't really have Air 4s, and it take an Air 3 ages to cast it. Um, where's the other guy I was going to use for this? Oh, it's there. So, we're not going to use Storm for this. Uh, we don't really need it that much anyway. We're not spamming thunder strikes really, and we're going to summon air elemental times three. And this guy can be times five. This guy can be times three because they have to spend double gems to. Maybe I should do lesser air elementals. I'm not. I, th I think that's a terrible idea though. I think they're much worse than the real deal. We're going to do this. And I've never actually done this before. Hopefully this isn't being followed up by an entire army behind it. And hopefully it doesn't bring, you know, reinforcements. That's what I'm saying. But let's see. We're going to put a whole load of air gems on this fellow. Why? He's air three, isn't he? Oh, it has a high fatigue cost. So let's see what happens when we put reinvigoration items on him. Oh, we don't have any to spare. 
Oh well, doesn't matter. I could have sworn we had an amulet of resilience. No, no, we didn't. Um, let's see. Oh, maybe this is a terrible idea after all. Two Elder Elementals versus that whole force. It's not going to work out. So you know what? I am actually going to just be a bitch. We can cast Storm though. We could cast Storm. And then summon Storm Power. Take a while, but we could do it. I'm just going to go back to summoning Rakshasa Warriors. For this one last turn before it all kicks off. And he can blood hunt. I don't care about nuking my income on my cap circles right now. Right now I just want slaves. I want... Ah, oh, I feel so foolish. I was so foolish to complacently assume that I had all the time in the world before Hinnom would attack me. And he, you know, his decision to attack me is com uh, at this relatively early juncture is completely sensible, and it's it's worked well. It's cost me a lot of oh, these guys can come along for the ride, and they can let's get them set up for the proper. Oh, except they can't because they'll get. Um, we need those shrouds. We're making two shrouds, and they'll give us the bless, and we'll put them on these guys when they're in battle, so that they don't get burned by their own sacred bodyguards that I'm going to give them. Um, so yes, but we'll set them up this turn to cast earth buffs because that's what we want them for. Let's see, iron warriors. I oh, know we still don't have the proper area of effect one. That's not good enough. We don't care about that spell when it's area of effect one. What we want is summon earth power, legions of steel, strength of giants, and then another legions of steel. I think. And then another Strength of Giants. Strength of Giants? Hello? Where's it gone? Right. And um, this is just your basic, very lazy script. We're just leaving it there for ourselves tomorrow. So anyway. Um, and let's just have three extra skeletons in the upcoming fight. Um, So yes, things are looking terrible for us, but we should be able to fight. I mean, certainly we can fight Niflheim and Abyssia uh, with all of our forces over in this corner of the map that are going to be coming over to them. The question is, can we fight Hinnom? Well, we're about to find out, and we're not going to have much choice in the issue either. I'll feel really stupid if he manages to besiege my capital, actually. I can't let him just turn up and besiege my capital with a tiny force. That would be pathetic, especially now that we have gone back. We're now cast. We're now making palancashes once again. It's it's reasonable to, to make palancashes now, uh, now that um, the war has actually started, because they'll either, they'll be paying for their weight in gold very swiftly. I wish there was a hotkey to only show the units that you have patrolling. Let's see, we want the Air 3 guy who's patrolling to cast Storm. Where's Storm? Do we have Storm? Why do I think I don't have Storm? Oh, we didn't research it. God, I'm so dumb sometimes. Uh, two Air Elementals is fine. What do we have? We have 50. Wait, Blood Slaves? Oh, yes, yes, because we're going to take these items off these guys. And we're going to give them each a dagger. And they can now do that. Um, now, what are these guys going to do? They're patrolling. This guy can summon air elemental twice. Maybe more than that. Let's just do that, because he is air three. So he should be able to manage it. Actually, no, he can cast it twice. And then he can cast, hopefully, where is it? Reinvigoration. Then he can cast it two more times. And uh, all we need to do is actually give him the slave, but we can't do that now. Uh, let's take some slaves off someone who doesn't actually matter much. Like this guy, what's he doing with that slave? That doesn't... Why is he going there anyway? I don't know about that. Let's take the slave off him. And let's give it to him. 
Ugh, so greedy. So yeah, he can do that. These guys, I guess, can do this. And then once they've done their air elemental summoning, they can... Oh wait, why did I take the second one off him? They can... Well, this guy can attack, and he can attack large enemy monsters after casting some self buffs. And let's have a look. After the damage reduction. So Mistform is still useful against anything, really. Uh, what do we have? Invulnerability, not useful. Drain life, not useful. Mirror image, extremely useful. Let's see, are there any conditions on this? A strike will have an equal chance of hitting each image. So maybe we can actually fight up the Melkarts toe to toe. Mist, Thunderstrike, Bolt of Unlife. Raise Dead, not particularly important. Hell Power might be interesting. Bloodlust, we don't have access to. Uh, and let's just give this guy all of the cool items that we have. Well, they're not actually that good, but you know what I mean. Let's see if we can ever actually fight these Melkarts. I mean, he, he might die, but he's going to do a lot of damage. And the third guy that we have patrolling is this fellow. So he can summon an air elemental and then he can cast Blessing a bunch. And he can actually cast Smite Demon, that's amusing. I don't know if Melkarts are actually demons though, so I guess I won't get him to do that. Uh, I wonder if we can summon a Storm Candle, a Death Candle, a Corpse Candle. I think that requires the Fire Crossbar. Uh, yeah, so this is looking pretty bleak, actually. We're already falling apart from, at the seams because we got so surprised by Hinnom. I, don't, I shouldn't have been surprised. It was pretty obvious, a pretty obvious move. So anyway, how's our blood slave income? Of course, it's not going to be very good now. Because um, we lost Plains of the Blood Turkey. Oh no, we lost 51 blood slaves there. Horrible, horrible stuff. Um, so let's just ignore that. 51... So this is 44, 55, 95, plus 12, so 107, 114, 129, 169, 171. Uh, and then these two I think we forgot to include. Which brings us to 186, and it would have been 230 with this province. So yes, 186, pretty respectable stuff. We don't have p patrollers in all of these locations though, so... It's not exactly sustainable. Oh, and here's some blood slaves that we don't... Well, there's no reason for these guys to have blood slaves. We don't need them. So I guess this guy can have blood slaves. And so can this guy. You know what? I pass you. I'm going to get him to... cast hell power. Where is it? Oh, he can't. He's not actually skilled enough. That's annoying. Well, he can still cast bloodlust. Maybe he shouldn't be. Let's see, where's bloodlust? And then he can cast reinvigoration. And yes, that's our whole turn. And um, both of these guys are more skilled than me, so we are, in fact, about to get sodomized by them, I think. But there's only one way to find out if that is, in fact, true or not. And we're even going to be making these guys, because we're panicking that badly. Um, Skull of Fire, why am I doing that? Let's cast something serious, like, uh, I don't know what I can cast, really. I don't know what I can do with her, apart from that. Ooh. Me. That was very rude. I might have to edit that out. So yes, that's turn 45. And we're basically screwed. And we're an idiot. Because we allowed this to happen. 
So yes, um, there you have it. Toodaloo. Hello chaps, it's day 46. And that music's probably too loud. So anyway, we are, we were very, very, very upset uh, last turn. And I wish I was being sarcastic, but no, I am actually such a bitch that I felt upset over a computer game. Such, I'm, so I'm still not a normie. I may have a couple of part-time jobs, but I haven't become a wagey or a normie. And uh, where's my microphone? Oh, here it is. So what we're doing... So yes, um, we're, we're, we're feeling much better. Because Hinom has not turned up. It, they haven't turned up with lots of troops. They do have three metal carts here, but yes, these immediate incursions are just what they seem to be. They're, they're merely incursions. And I'm pretty sure you can see what's in a neighbouring province from a besieged fort. So, um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is, in fact, an empty province. So we're going to come in here pretty hard with these guys. Which will probably then spur him to go here and try and besiege our capital. But we, we still have a pretty good blood eco. I think we got 160 slaves in this turn, but that's including, like, backdated slaves that were coming on on scouts. If we look at the ones we actually gathered this turn, 51, 57, 75. That is a bit loud, actually, isn't it? Six, uh, 75, 85, 93, 100. 100 and, um, what's that, 56? Oh, wow, our blood slave income is pretty good. 186, 198. So, yes, things are looking pretty good for us. 198. Well, if it was 200 blood slaves per turn, then that would be 80 Rakshasa warriors a turn. And we do have enough casters to summon all of that. And 80 Rakshasa warriors a turn, I think that beats what hidom has got coming at us, personally. And we also are bringing in these these guys. Now, what I'm doing by moving these guys over is I'm, you know, this border, if you just look at these two provinces, does not look so good anymore. Actually, can you see what I... No, you, you guys can't see light shot. Oh, well, never mind. You can't see my screenshotting tool hovering. But these two provinces, you know, Niflheim might attack me if I retreat from here. But that's just... That we just can't really do anything about that. It's just gonna, gonna have to. That's how it's gonna have to be. Now, if I retreat on this commander, does that mean the crows will retreat? I think it doesn't. I think the crows are gonna get them all cells all killed, which is very unfortunate. Um, over here, we lost our Akshasa warrior due to not. We didn't bless them all, and so one of them burned to death. Very annoying. But yes. Mashaka is, do is done. This is their last turn of freedom before we besiege their forts. Oh, I better put some PD in here. And it looks like he w really wasn't having a good game because where's the site searching? I don't think he did any site searching. Maybe he did here. Maybe this was Niflheim though. So yeah, um, it's annoying that we lost all of this income. But to be honest, our gem income suddenly doesn't feel so crucial anymore. Because what are we actually going to do with it? Uh, I don't know. Because really, I want to just save up for Bane for uh, Wraith Lords when I get ultra, uh, this this one. Also, evocation. Let's see. Uh, how's our evocation looking? I want I want evocation five so that I can have storm. What does Blood Magic 7 get us again? Samanishad uh, and Leech. Leech is what we're getting Blood 7 for. Enchantment 8's good. Tell you what, let's get Conj 7. Then Blood Magic 7, then Enchantment 7, then... You know, that's a bloody lot of research. We've got two more turns before we get um, Marvel Warriors and some other important spells. These water gems, I think I'm going to use simply on in, uh, empowering this guy. Oh, he can, he can make this at least. Maybe we shouldn't spend it on empowers. Maybe we can forge bottles of living water. 
and use someone as an assassin. But I think Melkarts would just kill assassins. I think the only way we can deal with Melkarts is just a huge ball of our sacreds with strength of giants and bloodlust. It's, it's, it's crude, but it'll have to do. That's just our only choice. Um, Pan is going to attack us pretty soon. I am the logical choice. But hopefully we can intimidate them by leaving these troops stacked here. Um, these bloodhunters are retreating. The good thing about them raiding this province... You know, maybe my earlier... The disaster in this province encouraged them to raid this province, thinking they'd kill everything there. The good thing is that now, when these guys come in, they won't be able to escape back here. Now, they're probably okay with that. They're probably okay with just endlessly raiding. Huh. So what actually am I going to do about them? Because if they start raiding in here, it's going to be very irritating. Well, I'll just I'll just have to deal with that when it comes. I can always switch the the blood booster daggers around so that I can summon um, summon things where I want them, like I'm doing here. What on earth? What? Why? What? 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 How can that possibly be the logic? You sit. What? Oh, when you go there, you can go there. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. But we're gonna go there, I think. A Buddha and devils. Devils. Why does he have devils? So we can't go there because we don't have the troops available right now. But we can deal with that with 35 unblessed palancashes. Look at the kills on all these guys. Jeez, 20 kills and no afflictions. I should probably build a temple there sometime, but it's all just so busy. Never enough time to do everything you want to. Uh, also, when this province got attacked, it did mean our crystal mages had to retreat. Thankfully, both of them escaped, so that's fine, really. Although, it does mean he now knows that I have crystal mages, which is... Well, he would have known that from looking at the thrones, anyway. Oh, so there was no throne over here. Where is actually the throne in this part of the map? It's just this. Yeah, well, that's that's today's turn. But let's actually have a look. 14 points required to become the new god, and I have six. So I need to capture four thrones to win, which is not something I'm going to be doing. So we're miles away from a throne victory. Let's have a look at who's claimed what again. So we claimed some of the best thrones ever. Mekane got this, which is a very cool throne. Uh, and they claimed this. If they didn't have Order 3 already, and I don't see why they would, then that's very good for them. And that's probably part of why they wanted to buy Blood Slaves from me. But yeah, that's, uh, that's turn 46. Not really much more to report. See you traps next time.